Let me start by paying tribute to the late uh, chairperson of the National Assembly Portfolio Committee on Police, Ms. Uh, Dina Jomad Peterson, who died earlier this week. On behalf of the men and women in blue, uh, we'll remember the late chairperson for her oversight uh, over the police to account and execute in order for us to execute our constitutional mandate. With a straightforward and resolute approach, the late chair person crisscrossed the country conducting oversight visits to police stations, including service points and training academies. We will surely miss uh, guidance and support as we continue with the journey to making South Africa a much safer and better place to live. Our condolences also go to the family and colleagues of uh, Mr. Kevin Pillay, uh, who was the Secretary of the National uh, Community uh, Police Consultative Forum, where he served as a secretary. He also uh, served as the chairperson of the Mbumalanga Provincial Board Chair. Ms. Pillay will be remembered for his commitment and contribution uh, to good relations between SAPs and the communities. SAPs has sadly also lost a number of members this week. We also would like to take the opportunity to pay tribute and send condolence to the family of Brigadier uh, Jackson Kaulese, who died in Bloemfontein earlier this week. He will also be remembered within the detective environment and subs at large. Our condolence also goes to colleagues of uh, Detective Commander at uh, Moinwe Police Station, who was also uh, killed in a hijacking incident earlier uh, this week outside his home. Uh, we also pay tribute to Constable Mothopi, Constable Mukwena, Constable Mbende from Fortville Saps, who were involved in an accident, vehicle accident, outside Pochevstrom. Our sincere condolence to the families of Sergeant Major uh, of DPCI, who was uh, shot yesterday in Mamelodi, and Warren Officer Durant, who is a branch commander of uh, Villiers Police Station, who was shot also early this morning. The SAPS continued to implement the police safety strategy, which seeks to look at the safety of our members. May their soul rest in peace. Uh, coming to the business of the day, our continued analysis on, of crime pattern and emerging crime threats has led to the inception of the high-density operation, which we will soon, uh, in the coming weeks, launch it officially. But we have started working on Operation Chanela since the 8th of May. We will continue to implement the five-pillar approach. Operation Chanela see all provincial commissioners and senior management from province leading and taking part in weekly high density crime prevention and combating operations. Operation Chanela comprised of regular stop and searches, vehicle checkpoints, roadblocks, cordon and searches, high visibility patrol including foot patrols, the tracing of wanted suspects with a focus on the apprehension of murder and rape suspects, compliance inspections at uh, liquor outlets and second-hand goods. I'm pleased to report that we are starting to see a positive impact of these integrated high-density operations that are intensified over the weekend when crime is most prevalent and reported. Since the inception of these weekend operations, the following successes have been achieved. 
we made uh, we we had 21,200 suspects were arrested for various crime ranging from murder, rape, malicious damage to property, and the breakdown of these 21,200 is as follows: 1,126 wanted suspects were arrested, 188 suspects were arrested for murder. 219 suspects were arrested for attempted murder, 210 suspects arrested for rape, 134 suspects for robbery and aggravating circumstances such as high checking, truck checking, and CIT robberies. 729 for burglary, residential, and business, 2,522 for assault GBH. 1,808 1, for being in possession of drugs, 1,103 for common assault, 1,082 for dealing drugs, 861 for dealing illegally in liquor, 774 for driving under the influence of alcohol, 846 for possession of dangerous weapons, 163 for possession of illegal and unlicensed firearms and 1,425 were illegal immigrants who are illegal in this country. In the process of our operations, we recovered the following. 138 vehicles have been uh, recovered during this period, and the following drugs were confiscated. In various grams, we confiscated cocaine, crack cocaine, crystal meth, and nyaupi as well as Mandrax and 11,344 tablets of Mandrax. Over and above the operation in Shangela successes, I'm therefore also pleased to announce in the past six months starting 1st December 2022 to May the 5th, a total of 120,278 suspects were arrested for various crime with majority of these cases still before the courts. We will continue to focus and intensify our operations on, on, on detecting and tracing illegal firearms in a bid to ensure that we permanently remove them off our streets to ensure the safety and security of communities. The recent crime stats indicated that firearms are the most preferred weapons used in the commission of crime especially murder. The mass shootings in some parts of the country remain an area of concern. In our quest to remove these uh, farms permanently, it is encouraging to report that 215,151 firearms and more than 2 million rounds of ammunition have been destroyed from 2019 up to date. These were illegal and unwanted firearms that were either confiscated or seized during operation as well as those that were voluntarily uh, handed over to police stations during the firearm amnesties. In this financial year, we plan to destroy a further 12,592 firearms that were also confiscated during operations. In our continued bid to protect women and children and the vulnerable groups of this country. I'm pleased to announce that 17,481 suspects were arrested for gender-based violence and femicide-related cases during the past financial year. 386 life imprisonment, life imprisonment sentences were handed down to 230 accused during the same period. 221 accused were handed down 6,024 sentences, which range, ranges in the category of 20 years and above. 421 of accused were handed down 6,498 sentences in the category of 10 years, between 10 and 19 years imprisonment. At last, 692 accused were handed down 3,898 sentences in the category of one to nine years imprisonment. 
in relation to strengthening our crime combating efforts in various provinces. We have Operation Lockdown in the Western Cape that is still running with a focus on the uh, six priority stations which are uh, involved in violent crime, including uh, gangsterism, extortion on business and economic size. Uh, those stations, as you are Delft, Fuleni, Nyanga, Rare, Lingelet West, uh, Kailicha, and etc. Our specialized units continue to, re to, to maintain presence to deter crime from happening. From the 1st of December to date, 278 suspects have been arrested for various crimes ranging from murder and theft and hijacking of motor vehicles. 112 stolen and hijacked vehicles have been recovered, 28 firearms and 470 ammunition have also been seized in 124 cases that are also before the courts. With regard to combating gang-related crime in Gauteng, still on the com combating of uh, gang-related crime in El Dorado Park, Nuclear and Westbury, in Gauteng, 127 suspects have been arrested and 89 cases are before the courts. 67 of the arrested are attached to gangs in the Westbury area. Nine firearms have been confiscated with 66 rounds of ammunition. 20 stolen vehicles have been recovered in the area. In Westbury, since the ministerial intervention in March, guns have been silenced, and this can be attributed to the increased visibility and deployment in the area. In Deep Slot, still in Gauteng, the ongoing specialized deployment in Deep Slot area of Gauteng uh, continue to yield results. For the reporting period, 585 suspects were arrested, with 15 firearms recovered, 11 uh, stolen and hijacked vehicles were also recovered, and 399 cases are still before the courts. Uh, in the uh, Manguzi area, that is the northern borders between South Africa and Mozambique in Guazul Natal, a task team has been deployed in the cross-border crime of Wazulu Natal and they have registered commendable uh, successes. They have arrested 75 suspects since the deployment four months ago. The task team made of specialized units and organized crime detective from police in headquarters in Pretoria were deployed to the area in, in, in uh, March last year following community engagements. Uh, following our intervention and deployments to the area to disrupt and dismantle crime syndicates at the borderline uh, between South Africa and Mozambique, 37 vehicles have since been recovered, 27 firearms and 321 ammunition seized. In the fighting the illegal mining and uh, infrastructure-related uh, crime, in an effort to deal with the scourge of non-ferrous uh, metal theft, essential and critical infrastructure-related crime, extortion and construction, and economic side, as well as illegal mining, we have established 20 task teams, uh, which we call economic infrastructure task teams, have been deployed in hotspot areas and in Pumalanga towns where illegal mining is prevalent, 182 suspects have been arrested, 38 firearms have been recovered, 1,251 rounds of ammunition, 60 vehicles including trucks have been recovered and 75 cases are currently before the courts. In Limbobo province, uh, within the mining area of Burgas Fort, 413 suspects were also arrested in connection with illegal mining, 10 firearms, uh, 142 rounds of ammunition have been seized, and 20 stolen vehicles, and those used in the commission of crime, including trucks, have also been recovered, and 158 cases are before the courts. To prevent and combat theft of commodity and minerals in the Richards Bay area, as well as to prevent 
the murder of officials linked to local mine. 26 suspects have been arrested, eight firearms recovered, and 48 rounds of ammunition seized, with eight stolen vehicles, including trucks, that have been recovered. And 11 cases are before the courts. In Guamajola area, in the area of uh, Port St. John's in the Eastern Cape, you recall where we had earlier a problem of where women and children had to flee and live in the bush, and the number of homestays were banned in that area. We have since deployed specialized units in that area. They have to so far arrested three suspects that are linked to the alleged, alleged uh, terrorism of women and children in that area. Two firearms have been recovered and uh, over 87 rounds of ammunition. We recently, uh, in strengthening our relation to work with communities, we recently uh, hosted a community police in Daba. We have uh, concluded a three-day CPF in Daba that was held in Pretoria in May. The India was attended by leadership of the CPF structures across the country, where we have collectively agreed that we will jointly intensify our efforts to, to, to capacitate the CPF structures. And uh, a resource funding model is being developed currently by the national uh, body of the CPF. And I must also say, even this morning, I did engage with uh, the CPF in this uh, sub-district uh, one of Bujanala in the northwest, where we are today. Uh, we are at the police station of Klephart. We, are engaged, we engaged the CPF in the morning, and we listened to the plight of problems that they have. And there are areas that we can easily attend to and some of the problems are uh, medium to short term, but there are those that we can address quickly, like our vehicles and so on. In our, our quest to ensure more booths on the ground, we already have 8,600 trainees that are currently undergoing the basic police learning development program. Uh, this is the first batch of the 10,000 police officers that we are training to increase capacity and bolster our crime efforts at the grassroots level of policing, which include stations and units. This intake is for the current financial year. The remaining uh, 1,400 will consist of uh, graduates, more especially uh, uh, science and law graduates, and uh, they will commence their training later this year in July, and the last batch will be in January 2024. In December, we deployed 10,000 officers to specialized units and police stations to enhance our crime fighting efforts. 4,000 of those will be aware have been already been trained in public order, and at the end of June, they will be deployed those various public order police units for crowd management uh, duties. In a bid to strengthen our investigative capacity, Major General Shadrach Sibia has been appointed as the Deputy National Commissioner for Crime Detection. He is promoted to the rank of Lieutenant General with effect from 1st of April, 1st of July 2023. Major General Sibia brings a wealth of uh, knowledge and experience to the position having started his career as a student in uh, 1989 at Hamaskral. He started off his career in Naisna and in the detective environment and he worked his way up the ranks. He has also served in various organizations and we are confident that he is, has the right qualities that will steer the crime detection environment in the right direction. Ladies and gentlemen, we trust that the aforementioned milestone through Operation Chanela and organizational developments demonstrate our seriousness and decisiveness in bringing down crime once and for all. We are working closely with our 
counterparts, sister departments, the SNDF, where uh, support is required. And of course, all other government departments, especially the Department of Home Affairs, we are working closely with them with regard to matters of common interest. I thank you. Thank you very much, National Commissioner. The ladies and gentlemen of the media, I'll now give you an opportunity to pose questions to the National Commissioner. We will start, I can't see what's happening on that side, Brigadier Marty will assist me. I will start on my side, on my immediate right. I'll take questions from the pet from the media. You will introduce yourself, you know the deal, and then come to your question. Can you please keep our questions short and not repeat what the other colleague may have may have asked over to you, Aaron? I'm Aaron Miller from Daily Sun newspaper. I want to ask about the shooting that happened yesterday in Nomilodi, where one hawk official died and three criminals died. I want to know whether they are related to Boko Harama incidents that should be. The next question is um, I'm Zola Sholan from Eastern Africa. So, um, residents in deep sleep, current or rather not on a day of action against crime today, um, destroying shacks that are believed to be harboring criminals and also attacking those who are believed to be criminals as well. And they went as far as marching to the police station. I just wanted to ask if you know is perhaps aware of what transpired earlier. Yeah. Next question from Sasha. Sasha uh, from SABC Radio. I just have a few questions from my television colleague, Kasala Lewis, who is not able to be here today. Uh, the first one, uh, just in regards to the Tabo Bester matter, uh, have there been any more uh, you know, arrests made in this regard? If not, are uh, any arrests imminent in the near future in terms of investigations? Can you also just uh, tell us a bit more about that? And then also the investigating officer who uh, apparently committed suicide in that Tabo Vesta matter. Has that been confirmed by police investigations or has any foul play been detected in that regard? And um, you know, in terms of investigations there, could you please give us a bit more um, clarity? And just the last one uh, from Krasalda is uh, Dr. Nandipa is actually uh, taking to the High Court um, to, uh, or she's appealing um, the High Court uh, ruling. Um, just your reactions in terms of that. What do you think about um, this matter? Thank you. Okay, the last question, and then we'll give the National Commission a chance and we'll talk to you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Ngozi Konamani, I'm from Power FM. Uh, National Police Commissioner, they are a couple. I've tried to keep them short. Um, there's seemingly um, in areas such as Social Movement, Makubani, Karangua, um, these shooting and killings uh, allegedly related to gangs. And I think the colleague who first asked the question he spoke about one of the gangs. Um, are you not concerned or just your reaction and sentiments towards that? And you did touch briefly on the issue of mass shootings, particularly in the Guazu and Adal province, which uh, in recent months we've been seeing a lot of it. Um, is there any specialized operation or specialized, you know, a team being put together to look into those. Another matter of interest, I think the public is always wanting an update on and seemingly every time there's reports of a breakthrough police uh, poor call vote on it, it's the matter into the death of uh, Keenan aka Forbes. Um, are you making headway in that particular matter? Um, and then the, the, the other question was asked by the colleague around the IO and the Tower Best matter because we understand it is subject to investigation. And then just lastly, uh, National Police Commissioner, this week, once again, you found yourself in front of Skolta. Uh, one of your officers, Brigadier Berger, did not appear, and he cited fearing for his life. What message does this send where a top cop is fearing for his own life, um, where it comes to ESCOM investigation into the various allegations that have been leveled? Thank you very much. Thank you. National Thank, th thanks. Uh, with regard to the, the, the first question about the incident at Mamelodi, uh, the officials, they were following up information. We will still, it is yet to be confirmed whether 
is it uh, Boko Haram related in Mamelodi or not? I will update once we are uh, sure of. But uh, that was a follow up related to aggravated uh, uh, robbery crimes. But uh, we'll update once we have got all the facts with regard to that. With regard to Deep Slut, we are aware, yes, that there are uh, protests, the communities are happy about certain people, including uh, foreign nationals. But that did not deter us to continue fighting crime in uh, Deep Slut. We will continue with the assistance of Home Affairs, uh, dealing with those that are in the country legally. Uh, we will continue doing that. With regard to Tabo Bester, any recent arrest? No, we do not have any, uh, there is no any other arrest, but we are still investigating the matter, and we expect that, yes, there will be further arrests in that regard, because there's quite a lot of people that are uh, involved in this investigation. It's quite a wider investigation, and uh, we are uh, busy with uh, with that. Uh, the investigating officer, Brigadier Mukaulezi, uh, at the moment the preliminary indications are that there is no foul play, the member committed suicide, but we did, myself and General Sintumule, we did uh, yesterday send a team there led by General Sibir to go and look at all angles and investigate the matter so that we can acquaint ourselves and be able to tell the public as to exactly what uh, is uh, the problem or what is uh, the possible cause of uh, this suicide if it's indeed confirmed a suicide. But preliminary for now, it comes out as, as a, uh, a suicide. We don't uh, we, we don't, uh, uh, we don't, there is no foul play for now. With regard to the appeal by Dr. Nandipa, uh, she has got the right to appeal. Remember, everybody that feels that uh, maybe the judgment is not, uh, it's not in your favor, you don't accept it, you have got the right to appeal. But uh, indeed, we are also uh, uh, prepared to defend our case. We think uh, what Home Affairs did by bringing them back into the country, there was no, uh, there is no any legality with regard to uh, what the role played by all uh, government departments. Uh, as we said, she was never arrested in, uh, in Tanzania, she was arrested in, in South Africa, hence uh, as South African police service, we never wanted to be involved in her transportation or even receiving herself and Tabo Bester. That was uh, the Tanzanian authorities that declared them uh, prohibited in their country and they used their laws to deport them uh, back to their country of origin, which is South Africa and they could only be received by those that are responsible for the population and uh, register of this country, in this case, which is the Department of, of Home Affairs. Uh, with regard to the, 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 the matters that you raised around uh, Makubani and uh, Harankua, we uh, do take into account that yes, there are reports to that effect that there are some groupings, especially in Harangua, that are uh, harassing people in that regard. And uh, the provincial commissioner of housing hands with his operation Ukaumalao, he moves around the area, including the Harangua area. We are aware that there are problems of groupings around that. With regard to mass shootings, yes. Uh, there is now and then mass shooting like the last one was in KwaZulu Natal in Cleveland Hostel. Uh, we currently we don't know what is the cause of that except that we were told that it was uh, a group of friends that were about to attend a funeral and they had an argument about money that they were supposed to take to the funeral in the Eastern Cape and uh, the shooting occurred. 
Whether that is true or not, for now that is what we know, but we are investigating the case. We are looking at all possibilities, including whether uh, there might be any other, whether the shooting is related to the previous uh, accused people that were sentenced to life. You remember earlier this year there were uh, uh, there were people from Cleveland that were sentenced to life. So we are looking also whether there is a link between that and this current shooting, and we will continue doing that. But we are not going to establish uh, units specifically to deal with that. We already have got murder and robbery units that are investigating this type of cases, including tax-related cases. And we think those units have got the sufficient uh, uh, specialist and the numbers to deal with this type of uh, shooting. With regard to the investigation in Aga, we currently like to say that we ask to be given a space. Uh, we will announce once we uh, caught all the people that we wanted to, but for now we are still busy with the investigation. Uh, it's unfortunate there is a lot of that goes into the media that sometimes is not uh, true facts, uh, we will definitely let you know once we uh, have uh, made a breakthrough. Uh, with regard to the scope of matter, uh, the matter of Brigadier Berger, yes, I will be dealing with it myself uh, further, as uh, you should be aware that I said He's supposed to have gone to Skopa, even though he said he's not going. I only uh, was sure that he didn't come when I arrived at Skopa and he wasn't there. So that will uh, handle it within the department and of course Skopa have got their own channels of uh, handling it. Uh, yeah, with regard to the investigations around ESCO, we are aware, yes, that uh, there will always be threats against uh, police, but it doesn't mean we must sit back and not do our work. We will continue doing our work, including investigations into ESCOM, and uh, we will do those investigations without fear or favor. doesn't matter who's involved, we will investigate. We don't investigate uh, crime because of the stature of the people. Well, we investigate crime we go all out, we do not choose as to who's involved in these specific uh, cases. Thank you. Thank you, over to you. Thank you very much, Moluku Mloto from ENCA. Let me go back to the issue of the brigadier mm -hmm. careers. Are you aware of whether there were threats uh, in his life or among the team members who were investigating that trouble, that's the issue, and do you know if at some point he wanted early retirement and was that uh, entertained, was it rejected by the police? And in terms of the arrest, I know you are saying that um, you, you, you're still investigating, but you might have heard the head of uh, the inspectorate, uh, sorry, judicial inspectorate for the correctional services, retired <coughs> Judge Edwin Cameron, who said in Parliament that he doesn't believe that uh, the escape of Tabo Besta was um, implemented by just operational personnel. He believes there are people <coughs> in higher positions. In your continued investigation, are you looking at people in high positions there regarding the Tower of Best. And I'm, I'm going to have back on the issue of uh, Keenan, a.k.a. Forbes, all because he was a public figure and a lot of people are looking at people such as those to say if police cannot crack uh, cases of prominent people, what about us ordinary people? My, my question in that regard, as much as you are saying you want to be given space. At this point in time, do you have a lead? Because we all saw somebody shooting at him who was captured on CCTV camera, or you are still in the dark. Thank you, Mr. Brigadier Mati, are there any other help? 
Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks. With regard to Brigadier Mkaulezi, yes, we are aware as subs that he did apply for early retirement. It is not only him, it's quite a number of uh, members that uh, applied, which I'm currently considering uh, those uh, specific retirements, which he asked to, he did apply uh, that he wants to go on early retirement. But as I said, it's not only him, uh, but as to why he uh, took his life, we cannot at this stage uh, preempt as to what was the reason. Uh, with regard to Tabo Bester, uh, <clears throat> look, when we do investigation, investigation would lead us where to go. Whether it lead us to down position or it lead us to high position, we do not mind. We will go wherever the investigation leads us. Uh, be assured that we will not uh, stop anywhere. We will go full out to follow the investigation. Uh, but whether it points to higher, uh, that I don't know at this stage. But uh, if you have more knowledge, we'll welcome that table to tell us where higher. But uh, we will be following this investigation and we'll, we'll make sure that we go wherever it takes us. It doesn't matter where. Uh, with regard to AKA, yes, we know who we're looking for. Uh, it's a matter of just rounding all of them. We know exactly who we are looking for, at least. That I can assure you, we know where we are going. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, National Commissioner, towards the end of your address, you did then announce the appointment of the new Deputy National Commissioner for Crime Detection. Earlier, when I introduced the panel, I did say Major General Sibia had joined the panel. So from the 1st of July, as the National Commissioner announced, we will be referring to him as Lieutenant General Sibia, who will be the new DNC. We know that the last person to occupy the space was the late DNC, Lieutenant General Fazi. So National Commissioner, with your permission, maybe we can allow General Sibia to give a few words. Okay. to first and foremost express my utmost gratitude to the Minister of Police, General Tele, the Minister of the Deputy Minister of Police, Honorable Matale, and the National Commission of the South African Police Service, General Fani Masemula, for the confidence they have shown in me and for appointing me as the Deputy National Commissioner of the SAPS responsible for crime detection. It is truly an honor and privilege and a task to which I, I commit myself to execute with vigor, diligence, honesty, and integrity. Without any waste of time, I think it is important to, to mention that my focus and immediate priority areas is to address the following crimes. We know that South Africa is really in trouble when it comes to contract killing, the hitmen taxi-related killings, illegal mining, extortions, kidnappings, construction mafia, the so-called construction mafias, and the cartels sabotaging electricity supply as well as transnational organized crime. Crime against the state and sabotage of our national electricity grid, corruption and organized crime against women and children are, are some of the critical areas of focus for the SAPs that we must tackle head on and immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, my appointment come at a time when the National Commissioner of the South African Police Service, working with the National Head of the Directorate for Priority Crime Investigation, Dr. Libea, 
and other law enforcement agencies are working on a national integrated serious organized crime threat analysis strategy. This strategy compares all law enforcement arms and their strategic partners towards a holistic and integrated operational approach in the fight against organized criminal groupings. I'm sure that you will all agree with me that if we break the connection between the car hijacking, illegal firearms and drugs, we will well be on our way to defeat organized crime in our beautiful country. I'm coming in to join a team of hardworking women and men who have been hard at work working towards the same goal, which is to defeat crime and organized crime.